And it should be very difficult for them to attack through the love struck base now. But if they have Ember Cleave, I think we're just dead. Okay, and they scoop. Hey guys, come on in. Welcome to the channel. I don't know about you, but I could seriously use a coffee. So I went ahead and made myself one. And you grab yourself something and we'll have a little sip together. Mmm. Synchronized sips are the best sips. Um, pardon the mug. I know it's obnoxious. It's something my wife gave me as a present because uh, she seems to think that I seem to think that I'm always right. It just so happens that I usually am. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no, the uh, the mug is obnoxious, but uh, it holds coffee. So right now I love it. Um, so today's video, I was wondering like, uh, what do I want to play? Like I've been wanting to play some MTG this week, but I didn't really know what deck to play. And then I was like, hey, rogues. I enjoy rogues. Is rogues still good? Yes. Yes, it is. So thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Ah, I'm just kidding, but you know that. Of course, we've got some gameplay coming up. So I've got a couple of games that I'm going to share with you guys today. Uh, just in gold rank on the way up to uh, platinum. Um, so far as I'm recording this, so I played f exactly five games yesterday. I went three and two, so I've got a 60% win rate as I'm recording this, which is pretty good. One of those losses, we got pretty unlucky. Um, it felt like a match that I should have won, but... I didn't. It's uh, Magic the Gathering, you know, things happen. Um, yeah, so we're going to share some of that with you. And then um, after I finish recording this intro, I'm going to be uh, playing and recording a little bit more. So I'll have a bit more in an upcoming video for you guys as well. Hopefully with the last couple of wins, I need to get back to Platinum. Been a little bit uh, little bit dirtly actually playing Magic since the uh, season reset. I've uh, got myself hooked really badly on uh, Fallout 4 on the PlayStation. So that's where most of my uh, free time has gone. And um trying to get a you know doing a little bit of twilio quest and i've been really actually quite unwell uh last week and i uh, also trying to get prepped for the uh college course that i signed up for so yeah still trying to get a cup to platinum um but yeah let's jump on into the arena and i will show you guys the deck list we're running today so here we go the decks rogues it's uh it's rogues guys you remember rogues yeah it's uh it's rogues. So this is basically the stock uh, PVDDR list from uh, Zendikar Rising um, with the slight change of I've cut one Law Mage's Domination for one Eliminate. Uh, just helps me deal with like Faceless Haven and some other things. And our Law Mage's Domination was like, it's a good card when it's good, but it's one of the clunkiest and most difficult to cast cards in the deck. So I'm happy to trim one of these for some cheaper removal that can... Um, Help shore up some of the weaknesses of Heartless Act. Which Drown in the Lock also does, but um, some games, like, you really just need that extra little, you know, thing to take out a Luminarch Aspirant, something like that. Um, excuse me for one second, guys. So, this little nugget of fluff right here is a constant interruption in my videos. She likes to be naughty and mischievous and cheeky. To get attention. To try and get my attention while she's in this room. Um, but yeah, that's the only change I've made to the deck so far um, for the games that you're going to see in this video. I will be making a change a little bit later, but we'll get to that then. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty much just a classic rogues deck. Um, yeah, so there's not too much to explain. I'm sure you're all fairly familiar with the deck. Um, you try to bill and kill people and... Uh, counter their spells and generally uh, make people unhappy. So uh, let's jump in into some games. On the play, always nice. That's a reasonable hand. I think we lead on Ruin Grab. Then we've got Drown in the Lock turned on from uh, turn two, basically. And we've also got Thought Thief held up. Wind Robber, we can slow roll a little bit, that's fine. Lovey Dovey, so this could be Gruel. No attacks, obviously. God, I haven't played Rogues in uh, ages. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so it's at least Gruel. It is exactly Gruel. Can't block it, that's fine. Mm. 
That is fine. Do I need a third mana right now? So if I play this instead of the Fabled Passage, it means I can play Wind Robber and still have Drown held up. Which seems reasonable. So they're already at eight. Jeez. What a world. So my plan at the moment is to cast Lull Mage's Domination on the Lovestruck Beast. But it means I'm going to be very short on black mana. Because I have to turn this into blue mana and I haven't hit any of my uh, double mana lands. Okay, do I want to spend this Drown? I kind of feel like I have to, to be honest. And we hit another one, never punished. How wonderful. Could buy Loris here. So next turn they can Ember Cleave. Oh, I didn't actually mean to hit next turn. I was just thinking ne they can Ember Cleave this turn if they hit a land. Which would be nice to drown, but it doesn't really matter. So I was actually, my thought process was that I am actually better off buying Loris there. But, uh, too late, I guess. Okay. So I think I just kill this and then I uh, domination the love struck beast. Finally hit a jewel land. Essence scatter seems pretty reasonable here to be honest. Gone through more than half their deck. Feels good. And it should be very difficult for them to attack through the Love Struck Beast now. I mean, turn four and all they have is a 1-1. One, one. Actually, no, it's like turn five or more. Is it turn five or turn six? Have I missed a land drop at all? But either way, obviously we sack this, stop them from getting their giant. That was a mistake if you ask me, they shouldn't have targeted that. It's just a great way for them to lose their giant. Obviously they can't attack here. Ooh, no follow-up plays. That hurts. For them, obviously. It's great for us. I 
I wonder if they're just holding priority, like they're in full control, or if they actually have something they can play here, like another stomp. Um, yep. We'll grab Loris here. I'm under no pressure to cast this Blood Chief's Thirst, so I'm just going to hold up Essence Scatter. Okay, so they scoop it up. I wonder what they were holding on. Okay, so if I remember correctly, I think Ruin Crabs come out. Blood Chief's Thirst comes in. And I think some amount of negate comes in for didn't say please. Um, I'm just trying to remember Paulo's old sideboarding guide. I think he actually takes out all of his ruin crabs and all of his of one mines. And he brings in, yeah, blood chief's thirst and negate. He doesn't bring in cling to dust, even though it can hit ox and uh, phoenix, which can be quite difficult for us to deal with. Um, and yeah, negate because there was a lot of adventure creatures and henge and stuff. I think there might be a few less adventure stuff. Um... I'm actually just going to try like this. I don't mind keeping some amount of of one mind and even the ruined crabs because um, as you saw there, the ruined crabs can just get us in such a good position so early on. <coughs> Obviously going to be a slightly different story on the draw. This hand doesn't thrill me, but I think it's acceptable. I don't know how I feel about this pet. I really don't. Ooh, opponent takes a mull. It's good for us. Okay, so since they've played the innkeeper, I'm actually just going to shock this in. And kill it off. Wait, they don't have any turn 2 adventure creatures. Uh, they could have the, uh, the knight. I don't know, this might be a bad play. And I kind of wished I could take it back. It's unlikely they have a turn to adventure creature. That's unfortunate. I really needed that to fill up my opponent's graveyard. Fabled Passage. I mean, I've already got four lands. I've unfortunately got two into the stories rotting in my hand. So obviously my hope here is to ambush the token with the Thought Thief. And they play right into it. And unless there's unless they're a shock gamer, there's no way for them to punish us. I think we just buy Loris here. We could have of one minded. Obviously, we can't. Oh no, we can cast Loris and get back the Wind Robber. Yeah, we could have cast off one mind there, but I think just buying Loris is the uh, better play at the moment. Okay, that's unfortunate. That's a big hit. So 
So this is a pretty obvious uh, Bone Crusher Giant. So I'm just going to hard cast this guy here. These into the stories at the moment are really hurting me. And by the time I can cast them, I mean next turn I'll be able to cast them for four. But I'm going to be very low on life by then. So again, we have to hope the opponent's stupid with the token. But again, if they have Embercleave, okay. They don't have Embercleave, that's very good for us. Yep, makes sense. I'm just going to fire this off now. I don't think I need the triome. With these, it's going to be a long time before cycling becomes my priority. We need to Heartless Act this token before combat, unfortunately. It's unfortunate to spend a Heartless Act like that, but that's the world we're in. The only thing keeping us in this game at the moment is that our opponent's been stuck on lands. They shock in. Questing beast. So we still need to take out this token. Unfortunately, we're just going to take four here. So we will be in stomp range. Or do I take the block? Yeah, I don't think I can let myself fall down to two. I think I need to chump here, unfortunately. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Yeah, okay, so we just need to find a way to remove it. That's a few ways. So we can afford to attack there because we've got two things in hand. So we can kill a 1-1 one, one token and deal with the Questing Beast through a combination of Drown in the Lock and Thieves Guild in four. So we will discard a couple of lands here. I think these two. The Scry on the Temple is nice plus the fact that it's a dual land. I mean, I have plenty of lands at the moment. So I could drown in the lock to keep my Enforcer alive. But I think the Enforcer might be the correct play at the moment because the drown in the lock can do a lot more things and I may need the counter spell flexibility. Now they might try to kill this here with a stomp. If so, we can counter it. 
but otherwise I'm happy for these to trade. And at four mana they can't uh, play Embercleave. They can cast a Great Henge whenever they want off the uh, Lovestruck Beast, but I do have the counter spell for that, so... It's something. That is something. Magda? Sure. Yes, I'm pretty sure they're trying to hold up a stomp for Loris. I'm pretty sure what's, that's what this stick is. So I think our plan here is Loris bring back Enforcer and play a Wind Robber. I'll be back in one second, guys. Just had to get some veggies out of the oven and uh, check on some sauce. I'm uh, reducing some sauce for pasta. Okay, so... Loris. Enforcer. Yep, they stomp. I counter. Passage, thin deck. Play Wind Robber. There's the Ox. We're halfway through their deck now, but uh, it's really likely this game gets decided by, dam decided by damage well before we get to milling them. Ox is a nice hit for them. Okay. That's obviously a problem for us. Especially um, if they have Ember Cleave in hand. But if they have Ember Cleave, I think we're just dead. Yep, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate we weren't able to keep a counter spell for that. I think we just keep like this. Our hand was a bit awkward there. We still managed to almost claw it back. I mean, maybe the play was to let Loris die to the Burn Crusher Giant and hold up the uh, counter for Embercleave, but I don't think it matters that much at this point. Okay, so I go first, which is kind of nice. I think I can keep this. It's a bit slow, but I am on the play, so... And I've got three one mana spells, so I think I can uh, 
claw back that tempo loss. Drowning the locks are very nice here. Yeah, not having an untapped land is obviously a bit painful. But we've got the uh, Blood Chief's Thirst to kill something if we need to. Otherwise, we've got the Crab. We're probably cracking this for black because we've got two black one drops. Scorching dragon fire. A little bit sad. But it's done its job. They're at seven in uh seven in their yard already, so I think we just take the aggressive line here. Again, that just seems like a bad play. Why wouldn't they target the Thieves' Guild Enforcer, which is not just the more threatening creature, but also one I can't sack and deny them their giant. I don't I don't understand that play from my opponent. I think that was a misplay. I think we uh hold up into the story. I wasn't even thinking about that, but we've got Drown in the Lock and the Gate. I don't think now is when we buy Loris. I'm very happy to spend a negate on that. They really should have um, targeted Enforcer with the first stomp. That makes no sense to me. Stomp a second time. Happy to counter it. I'm very happy with that. That was an excellent turn for me. And that's three of their giants gone. And a Scorching Dragon Fire, so that should be a lot of their removal gone. So obviously our most likely play here is into the story, but I'm going to keep the option open with the negate rather than cast this on my turn. I mean, it is an instant. There's no reason not to. Sure. Discarding another ox, that's nice. Okay, do I attack? Do I attack? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven cards in hand. So I could buy Loris here. And that would leave Negate up and Soaring Thought Thief. Or I could pay four for this. And then all I can do is Wind Rubber. If I attack here, they potentially go down to 11. Then on the crack pack, I go down to 16. That's fine. I'm happy enough with that trade. I mean, they can bring these back and pretty much clear out their graveyard, but that's going to take a few turns. Sure. Yeah. 
That's a bit annoying, especially if they can follow up with an Emberclave, but it's not the end of the world. We have the negate here to keep them off, a mem off an ember cleave. So this should be okay. We can just uh, get into the loop of sacking wind rubber and bringing it back with Loris to uh, block the gold span dragon. And if their plan is ember cleave, we can negate it. And we've also got one of these in hand so we can bring back a enforcer. Assuming Loris lives, obviously. So if I negate this, I don't have negate for an Embercleave. I think I need to let this die. And even though they've only got the one creature here, the treasures will generate a fair bit of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so they'll have enough to hardcast an Embercleave anyway. Yep, they go for it. I'm very glad I didn't counter the uh, removal spell before. I don't like that I have to auto-target all of my counter spells with this latest update. It makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong when I cast the counter spells, like trying to counter something I can't. I'm still used to the old system. So they can sack a treasure and bring back an ox if they want to, but they don't want to yet. Don't need a Fabled Passage right now. So, if they have another Ember Cleave, that's pretty devastating. So I think the cautious thing to do is just kill off this dragon now. Let them have a treasure. I could have played this out and done the block sack thing like I did last turn. But if that last card or this card they've drawn was an Ember Cleave, we're taking 10 damage and we're in a very precarious position. Eddie, sure. So they can start drawing a bunch of cards here, but hopefully we can close the game out fairly quickly with the Thought Thieves. Are they bringing back an Ox instead of playing an Adventure Creature? That's uh, an interesting play. I guess uh, if they find a land, they can st still play one of these. Uh, it's certainly a play they can make. Brushfire Elemental, okay. Does not have hay. I'm um, sorry, they don't have landfall. They do have landfall. I think this is more valuable than Agademus at the moment.
Oh, maybe that was a mistake. Oh no, I do still have the land drop to make. So we just need to dodge an ember cleave for one turn. One turn, no ember cleave. Oh, what have you got there? Are they roping because they're salty? Are they roping because they have it and they're trying to figure out how to get force it through? What they assume is a counter spell? I mean, I have essence scatter. Or are they roping because they don't have it and they're just trying to figure out how to survive this turn? Shatter skull smashing. Okay, so they can't have Ember Cleave then, can they? Unless they have a land drop and... No, because to get it to two, they'd need to attack with four. Okay, so they don't have Ember Cleave. So sack the Wind Robber, let the Thought Thief die, and they think this buys them another turn. Chump lock with the crab. I don't really need it at this point. 17 cards left. And then our flashing in the Thought Thief should be game. Because they can't have both a land and a Scorching Dragonfire in this one card here. And this should be lethal. <laughs> oh, we did it. Oh, that was tense. That was so tense. A hundred percent win rate. One out of one games. Okay, so we're on the draw, which is a little bit rough. Hand seems okay, though. Turn one, Ruin Crab. Which will hopefully get us up to our Into the Story. We got a wind robber. We got a piece of removal. Okay, so this is Winota. Good to Winota that. <laughs> but yeah, definitely Winota if they're leading on Fury Calm. Luminarch Aspirant. That's a little unfortunate. But what do we do, you know? What do we do? So I'm just going to double Wind Robber here. Um, try and save the Heartless Act for a Winota, assuming we don't get Spellbinded before then. Spellbound? Spellbindered? Put in a Spellbind? Uh, I'm not going to block. Hope to hit a uh, Drown in the Lock. Or a... What's it called? Or an Eliminate to uh, deal with this Aspirant. This might not be a Winota deck. This could be a... Um, just a Showdown of the Scald situation. Could even be Naya. But uh, it's looking very Boros-y so far. Has to be Boros. We haven't seen a single green card. Um, Heartless Act... I would much rather have a Drown in the Lock, but I'm not going to say no.
magic eight, so I can sack this now. If I want to soak up some damage. Sentinel's eyes, that's unfortunate for us. That's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Damn, we're getting bodied. So this guy's going to be chump blocking next turn. You got counters on both, so I can't Heartless Act either of them, which of course this is the... Uh, I have two of them in my deck, and I've drawn both of them in the game where I can't deploy them effectively. Down to five. Sure. Nothing we can do about that. Hope we hit something good here. Uh, we do not. We are defeated. That's unfortunate. It was a decent hand. Um, just uh, didn't find what we needed. I think we go like this. I think negate's going to be good here. If they're running showdown, it's pretty unlikely they're running Winota. Boros showdown, that's interesting. How do I feel about this hand? I think it's capable. We're not going to shock this in. Turn 1 Thieves Guild is not uh, worth taking 3 life. It's also not worth um, sacrificing our only untapped blue source. We're just going to play a tapped Agademes. Opponents taking their time over there. Could be connection issues on my end, to be fair, but to us, it looks like my opponent's taking their time over there. <coughs> you hate to see it. You do hate to see it. I think we just need to hold up Heartless Act. I'll take one here. I won't take one here. Double Doggo, okay. That's their turn. Okay, well, I'm gonna Heartless Act one of the Doggos just to use my mana efficiently. They can sacrifice the other doggo to save it if they want to. I mean, that's that's fine. We're we're happy with that. We're very happy with that, actually. I actually am gonna shock in here. Yeah, 
kill off the other doggo. They've shown that they're unlikely to attack with them, and at least this way I can... And sorry, and this way I can flash in an enforcer in end step. Because I do want to start getting on board now. Robber of the Rich is unfortunate. So we can at the very least stop them from robbing us. We will take the two. Um, we're not going to attack here. I think we're just going to sit back. Or are we? Yeah, no, I'm happy to chill. I think I'm happy to chill here. Just trade here. See what they want to follow up with. I think we grab a blue. We do need more black at the moment because Loris is double black, but... Okay, so they're holding up a stomp. Negate that. Stop them from getting their giant. Opponents missed a couple land drops, which is pretty good for us, but at any point they could slam a land. And a um, showdown. Skyclave up. That's fine. This is a little bit unfortunate. If I bring back the Enforcer, then I don't have any black mana up. But if I don't bring back the Enforcer, it's a dead giveaway that I'm holding Drown. I also don't like that our opponent has four cards in hand to our one. Okay, so they're scared of a potential enforcer, I guess. Or just the crackback with Loris. Robber. That's fine. Double drowns really nice. Sit back and I uh, hope to hit an into the story. Really fortunate for us that our opponent hasn't managed to hit um, enough land drops. This is unfortunate because they can start clearing out their yard, but I have to assume at least one of these three cards is Showdown of the Scalds, given that they haven't played stuff out. I really want them to block this so I can replay it. So they probably won't. Sure.
kill this rubber. Obviously not going to block. Take two here. Now they can start emptying their graveyard a little bit. Glass casket. On what though? I assume on Loris. So I think I have to counter this. It's a little unfortunate. Now they can show down and there's nothing I can do about it. But I really want to attack with Loris and gain some life back, which I assume they know. Fire this off. I really should have played the Ruin Crab before playing that land. As I mean, I am going to play the Ruin Crab. It's my only play this turn. That was an oops on my part. Strict misplay. There's the showdown they've been sitting on. Okay. They're not great hits, fortunately. Okay, so if I play this, I have to hit an untapped blue land it to cast Domination. Wow, they scoop. I mean, they were so ahead on board there. That's crazy. That's crazy. I think we just run it back like this. I'm keeping the Ruin Crabs in here because I think a lot more of my plan is uh, milling here. Nice hand. Rubber of the rich, okay. Hit a land, that's good for us. Minimize damage, of course. Double robber. Oh, that sucks. Even if I play the uh, enforcer now, they still get the triggers. That's pretty bad for us. The saving grace is there's nothing in our yard at the moment. Okay, and they miss a land drop. That's that's really good for us. Uh, I think we just need to sit back here. Unfortunately, they get to keep robbing us. Um, but yeah, I don't think attacking's the right move here, and there's unfortunately nothing in our hand we can deploy right now. I will trade with one of these robbers quite happily. They've hit a lot of lands, which is good for us. Into the story might as well not exist for now. They probably... Oh wow, I'm surprised they didn't try to save one of their save their robber there. That's really strange. Counter this. Probably did them a favor there getting rid of those lands.
Okay, so do I want to cast Domination here? Or do I want to hold up into the story? I think it's into the story. And just hope they don't hit anything good off Robber. I'd rather save Domination for a uh, more meaningful target. I mean, that sucks, but there's not really anything we can do at this point. But that's a good Domination target once they play it. Ugh. Those were not great hits. These two are pretty nice. Need to play the black land there so we have access to both of these. Just to kill anything that we actually want to kill. We will probably need both of these. Soaring Thought Thief, that's a nuisance. That is a nuisance. And it also means that it'll uh, turn on their exiled cards. So we want to let that resolve because we're going to steal it next turn. Sack the dog to protect it. Take two. I th do think we need to have negate up. I think we need to have negate up. That's unfortunate. Agadeems for two. Doesn't really get me anything. Uh, this is unfortunate. We're un sadly just taking little steps backwards each turn. There goes our Loris. So Loris is essentially uncastable now. Why is it saying it's only five? Oh, it only adds two. I thought it added more. I mean, that's really unfortunate, isn't it? Have to counter it. Three free damage in the air. The Usher's a much better block. They just let it through. Wow. Wow, I was not expecting that. Okay. 
Okay, there's nothing in my yard at the moment to bring back with Agadims. There's an ox. Sure. I wonder why they didn't block with the Asha last turn. I really don't understand that. Okay, so they're going for the Ox here. They had another Apparition. These are some weird plays. I don't think there's any point negating that. We need to save negate for something more meaningful. I think I still attack here, try and get a bit more life. I can bring it back in another turn or two with the um, Awakening. But yeah, seven is a much more comfortable life total than four. They can clean up their graveyard a little bit. This will get eight, this will get another two, but there'll still be some in there. I'll still be able to enter the story. Wow, dumping four cards. Let's see if there's anything good in there. A couple of giant killers. Could have got rid of the enforcer. And then an usher and a robber. They're not very relevant at this point. Okay, and they scoop. Excellent. Rank up. Yeah, so um, again, this is the deck, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we do actually have some more games coming up with this version of the deck, so I'm not going to go through and show you the changes I've made just yet. But thanks for tuning in, guys. You've been brilliant. I hope you enjoyed the games, and I've got a few more coming for you. Um, so I hope you enjoy Sneaky Bastards, because you're going to be seeing a lot of them. Peace out, guys. Stay brilliant.